Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and today in this video we're gonna talk about all the zombies we've seen so far in Dying Light 2. So let's start with the first infected, a biter and a degenerate biter. Driven by the lowest animal instincts, biters stumble across the streets, half conscious in search of prey. Sunlight, which is lethal to the virus, dries out their skin to the bone. They're not much for a threat alone, but if you get surrounded, they'll swarm you and eat you alive like rats. The parallel is intentional, just as rats are blamed for causing the Black Death in the 14th century. Biters are a physical manifestation of the plague you face in Dying Light to stay human. They feature different levels of decomposition depending on how long they have been out in the sunlight. Some are relatively fresh, while others have become skeletons with dried skin stretched over their rag-clad frames. The next zombie in the list is Viral. Virals are humans that have only very recently succumbed to the infection. However, they are still physically alive as they are seen speaking multiple times. As a result, their bodies still retain the physical strength needed for them to possess a high level of fitness and agility. They run faster than any other infected except for the volatile and bolter. They can also do jump and climb over obstacles and buildings, allowing them to chase after the players even when he's in a spot where the normal infected can't reach. If the UV rays don't slow the spread of the pathogen in time, an infected individual enters the first stage of the disease and becomes a viral. Virals are still full of vigor, which the virus enhances further. They're constantly uneasy and rackled by spasm. Once they find a prey, every muscle in their body engages in a mad pursuit. They'll chase it relentless and as soon as they catch it, they will chaotically beat it, scratch it and bite it like a wild animal. The next zombie in the list is Banshee. A vivid symbol of punishment for the sins of vanity and embroiled consumerism. Pieces of her evening dress still cling to the banshee's petite body as does some gold jewelry. Her hands have transformed into claws, her manicured nails into talons. Although banshee is driven by instinct, her behavior seems to indicate some unsettling remnants of humanity. Could there be a woman trapped within the rotting flesh of this witch? Tormented by a brief flashes of lucidity? The banshee is an especially fierce variant equipped with elongated arms and sharp claws, which let it deal heavy melee damage at extended range. Banshees, they're one of the new enemy types in Dying Light 2, and while they are easy to spot, they're much more difficult to defeat or easier than an average zombie. Banshee behave very different every time you encounter her. They're fast and aggressive and somewhat unpredictable. Also tragically, they sometimes experience flashes of lucidity that reminds them of a person they once were. Next zombie on the list is Revenant. It resembles a character from the worst nightmares and you can easily spot a revenant from the other infected. He has this wings like things behind his back and in his back you can see a glowing of bulbous weak spots that you can use to take him down easily. Revenant is unwieldy and slow. He also moves hesitantly as he has thin legs that can't really support his bulk. But he can jump really high and really far. Also a fun fact, his attempts to maintain balance are made all the more difficult by the growth of his back which looks like a petrified wings. Now, you might wonder what does Revenant do and should you be scared? And I would say yes, you better run for your life because Revenant is a special mutation. He can buff the surrounding infected by creating a zone of toxic mist and trust me, you don't want to enter in that zone. The next zombie in the list is Howler. Howler, also known as the Screamer, like all other infected, a Howler transforms from a viral. And just like all other infected whose transformation into volatile was derailed by a sudden dose of chemicals, Howler is born in the same way way. Basically, these chemicals attack the victim's larynx and lungs and that's how howlers were created. It's because of them that the streets of the city are so dangerous. They won't attack you outright, but if one of them spots a human, the toxic substance in their chest will begin to boil, forcing them to emit an unearthly scream that will call other monsters from the surrounding area. By the way, you can easily spot a howler by looking at his split jaw or the pulsating yellow growth on the howler's torso that makes him stand out from an ordinary viral. And Howler is more like a passive zombie. He doesn't fight, he's more like an alarm for other zombies that hey, it's lunchtime and I've got your human and then you can see some, you know, Papa Volatiles running towards him. The next zombie in the list is Demolishers. 
Demolishers, they're uncommon infected type. And did you know demolishers have split gel that suggests that the mutation took a sharp turn in a different direction right after a viral transformation into a volatile. Chemicals, you know, cause this body to grow to monstrous proportions. Though not uniformly, one arm is larger than the other and his disproportionately massive and sharp bones punctured his own skin. When furious, he tramples everything on his path like an infuriated rhino. The demolisher is the largest infected type encountered by the player. Its strength lies in his ability to break down walls, lift and toss vehicles and big stone chunks across far distances. When a demolisher spots the player, it will charge towards them. However, the demolisher is quite slow and you can easily, you know, dodge that. Physically, the demolisher is big but almost as intelligent as the biters. The attacks have longer wind up compared to its smaller kind, making for an easier time dodging and even creates opportunities for one to lure the demolisher's attack to dispense nearby biter groups. In Dying Light 2, demolishers have received changes in appearance. They no longer look like a former soldiers or policeman, but more like a civilian now. On their head, you can see some remains of hair. The lower jaws are similar to those that belong to volatiles. The right arm is much larger than the left. Their abilities are probably the same as in the previous game. The next zombie we have in the list is Goon. Goon. A physically large and strong infected that is roughly about 7 to 8 feet tall. Goon in Dying Light carried a heavy rebar, but in Dying Light 2 it's embedded in their body. Goon uses their rebar to smash people in the ground and swing at the player. Goon can also use its left arm to knock the survivors away, which works like a secondary attack if you ask me. Goons are much stronger than the regular infected, but they are very slow moving and lack the ability to climb objects and buildings at all. The goon swing with the rebar is slow and it takes a while to gather his strength to swing again, leaving him open to attacks or time for the player to get away. Like the demolisher, it can kill other infected and can be used to player's advantage. But with every strike of the player, the goon's going to get more aggressive and starts to attack quicker. Now this time the goon looks completely different from what we used to seeing in Dying Light. He has a split jaw now that confirms that he was going through the transformation from viral to volatile but because of chemicals his DNA was altered and it became a special infected goon. The goon in Dying Light 2 also has a beard and few facial hair and he is bigger than a regular goon and has pieces of metal embedded in his body like pieces of metal rods embedded in his body. Goon is a very special infected. The chemicals really cause his body to grow to monstrous proportions, but not uniformly. Their aggression levels are high, just like a volatile and demolisher. So I suggest when you see one, use a bow and arrow or spear to kill him. Next in the list is Bombers. Bombers, they are those special infected types that have exposed organs and it's shambling jog. Its behavior is not like common infected like biters, but one major difference between them is that the bomber picks up speed and begins to convulse whenever non-infected humans are within proximity. Whether this infected type manages to get close enough to the player character or is shot from a distance, the result always ends up with the infected type body exploding. The bomber not only explodes when in the vicinity of another player, but it will also explode if the player is within its view but cannot reach him. This explosion calls in vitals who are quite capable of climbing up to attack you generally in groups of 3 or 4, showing that the bomber has another role as well as like a siren calling in dangerous infected. Bombers explode immediately when damaged. This makes attacking them with a melee weapon fatal regardless of health as well as kicking them. Next in the list is Hazmat. Hazmat, also known as Gas Tank, it's a common infected type that were initially part of the special cleanup unit that was turned into the city and were subsequently infected. These former unit members now lurch among the very same infected that they were tasked with neutralizing. Hazmats are essentially bee suited biters entrapped within a durable hazmat outfit. Their most signature feature is the bright red oxygen tank strapped to their back. A direct impact to the tank, whether with a melee or a ranged attack, will set it to detonate in few seconds. The gas tank will explode loudly and violently, seriously damaging anything within a small radius and typically attracting virals to its location. Their suits prevent them from latching onto the players to bite them, but also makes them fireproof and significantly more durable than the typical zombies. 
By the way, they're also resistant to dismemberment and decapitation, and much more difficult to knock down through melee strikes. Next in the list is Spitter. Spitter is an uncommon infected noted for its ability to fire green acidic spit that deals damage to the player character within their attack. Now, not much is known about this infected, but it's just a variant of Spitter. Now, talking about the spit, that spit can actually reach far distance, and this time they do a lot more damage when compared to the first game. It is, however, one of the weakest special infected able to be killed with a few hits from a melee weapon which makes them relatively dangerous hold support and ranged enemies but weak when alone when encountered at melee distance next zombie in the list is a drowner the most interesting type of infected that we really know nothing of other than the fact that you need to make a certain choice to reveal them in the game also i believe it could be something like the witcher drowners but since 2019 techland has never mentioned their name or showed us any of the gameplay so i really hope we have this infected in the game but we'll find out soon when the game releases this week so far we don't really have much about the drowners Next zombie in the list is Bolter. How can we forget this infected? I have farmed him a million times to level up in the first game. The Bolter is an uncommon infected that is noted for being the only infected that doesn't attack the player character but rather flees when the player is near it. It is also noted for having green lumps covered in its body that glows. Along with the volatiles, it is one of the few infected that only appears during the night. In Dying Light 2, the Bolter has changed in looks and rest, he is all similar with the abilities and everything. I mean, check this out. Now, moving on to the next zombie, Papa Volatile, the king of all zombies. Nah, like seriously, Volatile is an infected that only emerges during night and most infected type can be easily killed when encountered by the player. However, that is not the case with the Volatiles. When a viral manages to avoid UV radiation for some time, they evolve into the deadliest of the infected, a Volatile. Primal strength that crushes any hope for a fair fight, his skin has hardened into armor over the years. The yawning hole in his torso clenches like a jaw, giving you no opportunity to deal the lethal blow. It's the species that will rule the earth unless somebody exterminates it. Compared to the normal volatiles, these volatiles are ripped in appearance with the more prominent fangs, a spiked carapace growths over its skin resulting in an even less human appearance than the normal variants. They are faster, stronger and more resistant against melee weapons, especially firearms such as military rifles and pistols thanks to their unique body armor that is similar to that of a demolisher. Their hits inflict more damage, or like seriously more damage, and they can notice you through camouflage, so you don't want to mess with them. They're also far more reliant on their highly accurate and highly damaging spit attacks, making them extremely difficult to escape from. Fortunately, they suffer from the same weakness as the normal volatiles. Now I believe I've covered all the zombies we know so far in Dying Light 2. But hey, I do have some more names, new names of zombies that are in the game, but we don't really know anything about them because Techland hasn't shared anything about them there's actually a charger in the game not this kind of charger but this kind of charger by the way this is a picture of a zombie from left for dead that is called charger so i'm repeating again we have no clue about the charger in dying light 2 we have literally zero info about him but yeah we do know it's in the game because charger zombie is in the list of infected in the art book of dying light 2. we have another zombie just like the charger it's called corruptor that actually could be the charcoal type of zombie but hey i could be 100 percent wrong and that's why i don't want to guess anything just try to understand this we have a charger and a corruptor zombie type in the game but we don't really know anything about it because techland has not shared anything about them i mean we guys are gonna find out soon in a week so yeah i'm so hyped for the game and i know you guys are hyped too and guys remember this there'll be most likely more mutations that techland has not told us about in fact they revealed about the zombie in the final episode of dying to know so yeah techland is keeping many secrets about the zombie and i'm sure that's done for a good reason all right guys that is it for this video then hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did then make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in my next video till then stay safe and stay human